Hostess, traces its roots as far back as 1905. Interstate Bakeries Corporation, or IBC, was created in 1930 and would grow to become the number one wholesale baker in the United States, with iconic brands like Hostess, Wonder Bread, and Dolly Madison, among others. After emerging from bankruptcy in 2009, IBC became known as Hostess Brands Incorporated. Hostess was a multi-billion dollar company, one of the biggest baking companies in, in the country, very successful. Uh, and they started getting trouble in trouble when they started acquiring other companies and they almost got too, too big. In 2004, after a failed restructuring attempt, the publicly traded IBC entered its first bankruptcy. During those four and a half years, BCTGM local unions and members at IBC agreed to significant wage and benefit concessions. Our union met with the company over a, a, a great deal of time and we worked out a contract where the workers gave up a few things. Uh, the other unions followed suit and what we generated was $110 million in savings. Although the concessions brought wage rates below those of national competitors, Hostess still began closing production plants and thrift stores, which resulted in a major loss of employment for its unionized workforce. In 2009, when the company emerged from bankruptcy, it was owned by private equity firms and hedge funds. The new ownership pledged to focus on modernizing its plants and trucks and invest in new technology that other baking companies were employing. But aging trucks and plant machinery were not replaced. New technology was ignored and the company's debt continued to grow as its sales continued to decline. It's just like one empty promise after another. We gave up concessions the last time. They said they'd give it back. We're, we're still here, taking another one. In January 2012, Hostess Brands filed for bankruptcy protection a second time. In 2012, they had, uh, they had new owners, uh, two private equity companies and a Wall Street hedge firm, and they filed bankruptcy again. Uh, that's called Chapter 22, and they came and wanted more concessions, but unfortunately the concessions uh, were much too much. Hostess approached its unionized workers to accept another round of concessions. Only this time, they were much worse than during the first bankruptcy, with benefit cuts totaling between 27 and 32 percent. They wanted to gut the entire contracts, cut the wages, cut the health insurance, take away their pensions, take away the retiree health insurance and the retiree health insurance savings plan. There's no way that we can actually work here and afford to pay our bills. Hostess unilaterally stopped paying its pension obligations in violation of federal labor law. According to its bankruptcy filing, the firm ended up owing union pension funds almost $1 billion in pension liabilities. They also told them that they wanted to close another 10 to 12 plants but wouldn't tell them which plants. At the same time that the negotiations were going on, the top 10 executives took huge raises for themselves. They, while they were sitting bargaining with us, the CEO gave himself a 300% raise. And there's no justification for any of that. Management's demand that workers accept major concessions, including losing their pension plan, was too much for the union members to agree to. Somewhere along the line, you gotta stand up, be a man, and say enough's enough. You know, I can't buckle down to every time you say, we want this, we want that, or if you don't, we're gonna take your job away from you. An overwhelming 92% of BCTGM members in every region of the country voted to reject the company's final proposal. Our workers decided to take a stand against this company because they were not going to continue to work and live in poverty. Pretty soon I ain't going to be able to feed my kid. That's scary. It's very scary. When Hostess received permission from the bankruptcy court to impose its last, final offer onto its baking employees, the move was met with a tidal wave of opposition that is rarely seen in today's labor movement. Things are bad enough. I mean, they can't get any worse than what they are now. And, you know, if they close the doors, so be it. BCTGM workers at bakeries across the country struck. Striking members traveled to other hostess bakeries and set up picket lines, which were honored by those members. Production ceased at 24 of 36 hostess plants across the United States. The strike itself, it was just teamwork at its best. 
and the members are what made it work because they had made up their minds that this was it. They were not going to give any more money back to the investors. We saw some heroic things from members. We saw the wives of members and the husbands of members bringing food out to the picket lines constantly, all the time, taking care and supporting the, uh, the effort. Uh, the communities that we were in supported our efforts. Folks that were not even uh, involved in the bakeries would come up and feed us and come up and walk the picket lines for us. So it was an amazing thing, uh, the, the strike, the hostess strike, was a very amazing thing. Striking BCTGM members stood strong in city after city. Steve Bertelli, BCTGM International Secretary Treasurer, who was the third region international vice president during the hostess strike, joined striking members on the picket lines in Columbus, Indiana. It was like a military operation. They went right down the line. They knew what they had to do. It's just a matter of everybody going about doing their job. And the thing that always struck me was they didn't ask if what they were doing was right. They said, we know what we're doing is right. It's morally right. It's the right thing to do. And they believed that. Uh, to a person. It was unbelievable. Um, they'll always be my heroes. They knew when they went out that door, the odds are they were never going to walk back in. There's not a, a day that doesn't go by where I don't think about the hostess workers. The hostess workers saved this union. They saved the jobs of tens of thousands of our members and gave them the ability to bargain for fair contracts for themselves and their families in the future. They are truly hero, heroes in the labor movement.